So what's all this talk about this, this liver thing? Is it, is it that important? Do we really need a liver? Yes, you need a healthy liver. And the problem is the majority of the population has a fatty liver. And a lot of people don't even know that they have fat in the liver until they get an ultrasound or they get a CAT scan and then they're, they're shocked. So I think it's number one important to understand about the liver and the importances as well as how to get the fat out of the liver. There's a great simple thing that you can do, which I'm gonna talk about. And there's also a drink that you can make every day to reduce fat on your liver and with some pretty good science behind it. And I'm gonna put those links down below with each of the ingredient that I'm gonna talk about. The first thing I wanna mention about uh, the liver is that people don't realize that bile is made by the liver. They think it's made by the gallbladder. No, the gallbladder is just a sac that holds the bile. But I wanna talk about the importance of bile for a second because the liver makes the bile. And the more you understand about what bile does, you'll appreciate um, the liver much, much more. Now, bile is a detergent that helps you break down fat. But uh, exactly what does that mean, break down fat? Let's say, for example, this is some fat, okay? And this is traveling through the stomach. You just ate some fat, and it's going to be now um, going down into the small intestine. So the stomach will kind of break it down to a certain level. But then we need help from the gallbladder releasing bile to act on this, this big clump of fat, right? So the problem is that um, bile needs help to break this thing down. And it uses help from the pancreas. There's an enzyme in the pancreas called lipase, okay? Lipid meaning fat, ace meaning enzyme. The problem is that in order for lipase to do its job, it needs the bile's help. And what the bile is gonna do, it's gonna break down this significantly so there's more surface area for the enzyme to act on. So this is what bile does. So the bile starts to break this down into small little pieces here. So let me just kind of break all that down right here. All right, so now we have a much greater surface area of fat for the enzyme lipase to do its job, okay? So simply bile increases the surface area of fat so you can get more of a complete digestion of that fat in the extraction into the small intestine. That's where it gets absorbed. So without enough bile, then the enzyme can't do its job. And now you don't get enough vitamin A. The first symptom of a vitamin A deficiency is like night blindness. So you're you're driving at night, it's raining, and you just can't quite see. It's hard to see at night, okay, night vision. That's vitamin A. I mean, vitamin A also uh, counters um, uh, bad sinus problems if you have an immune system issue. So if you have really bad sinuses, chances are you could be deficient in vitamin A. But vitamin A does a lot of other things as well. Then we have a lack of vitamin E. Well, that could show up in your heart. So maybe you get more inflammation in the heart, in the uh, coronary arteries which shows up as calcification, higher levels of cholesterol, placking, things like that. Other than that, it probably won't do anything else. I'm being very sarcastic. Then we have vitamin D. Let's say you can't absorb vitamin D. Uh, well, that's a big problem because you need it for uh, getting rid of pain. You need it for decreasing blood pressure. You need it for the formation of calcium in your bones and as well as the absorption of calcium in the small intestine. So if you don't have vitamin D, the rate of absorption of calcium is like way, way lower. With vitamin D, you absorb 20 times as much calcium as if you didn't have it. So now you have all sorts of calcium problems like bone loss and uh, problems sleeping at night and you name it. Then we have vitamin K with vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. If you're deficient in vitamin K1, then you, you get bruising easily, uh, you bleed easily, you can't clot as well. And with vitamin K2, a deficiency of that, you have a calcium building up in the arteries as well as the joints. Then we have um, other fats like omega-3 fatty acids. You need that to keep your inflammation really low. And without enough omega-3 fatty acids, you have all sorts of inflammatory conditions, arthritis, heart problems, um, even dementia because of the involvement in your brain. Your brain apparently needs a lot of omega-3 fatty acids. 
Now, the other thing that bile does is it helps get rid of the excess amount of cholesterol. Let's say, for example, you decide you're going to lose weight and you get on the ketogenic diet. And now all this fat cell is releasing its triglyceride and its cholesterol. That's what's in a fat cell. The combination of triglycerides, which is, can be used for energy, and also cholesterol, which can't be used as energy. So we need bile to help eliminate that excess amount of cholesterol. So if you don't have enough bile, because you don't have enough capacity of liver function, then you end up with gallstones. Gallstones are created by a super concentrated um, cholesterol situation because there's not enough bile to emulsify and break it down. So we get this crystallization of cholesterol. So when people have gallstones, they actually need more bile. They don't need necessarily less cholesterol. And then you also have people that are on statin drugs, which basically block the production of cholesterol. And guess what bile is made out of? Cholesterol. This is why the risk goes way up in getting gallstones and all these other issues if someone's on a statin. And then the other big important uh, purpose of bile salts is to help eliminate toxins. And now your body becomes instantly more toxic because you don't, you can't get rid of the toxins that are floating to the liver uh, because the purpose of the liver is not to store toxins. It's to uh, break down toxins into harmless particles. So if you can't break them down, then, and you're taking medication and you're being exposed to planet earth, boy, you get a lot of extra poisonous things that are flooding through the uh, bloodstream and through your body. So we really need this liver to work correctly. Another symptom of a fatty liver is that um, you start getting a heavier liver, it becomes enlarged, and that pressure uh, doesn't fit in the cavity anymore on the right side. So it backs up and it puts pressure into the right side of your neck, up to here to the shoulder. So you get shoulder pain, uh, you get a lot of tension in your right trap, and that can create a fullness underneath the right rib cage is one of the symptoms. And, um, you know, people say, well, I, I need to um, flush out my gallbladder. Well, you know, you need to get rid of the fat in the liver. It's a little bit different than flushing out um, anything, which I'm going to explain. The other important part about the, uh, the liver is its conversion function from T4 to T3, your thyroid. Without a good liver, you can't convert the thyroid hormones. So you might have hormones there, but they're not activated because they can't be converted. 80% of all the active form of T3, the thyroid hormone, um, works through the liver. So without that liver fully functioning, uh, maybe you get um, 70 or 60 or 50% of it being converted. And here you are wondering, why do I have a thyroid problem? There's no reason to have a thyroid problem. The problem is not the thyroid, it's your liver, it's the conversions, okay? Very important. The other very important function of the liver is to buffer um, certain excesses of uh, sex hormones like estrogen and testosterone. It's not good to have too much testosterone or too much estrogen. And so without the liver working right, you cannot form the proteins to buffer those hormones. And so then we have uh, issues like um, polycystic ovarian syndrome in women, which is uh, uh, too much androgen. And we also have too much estrogen in even men. They start getting all sorts of problems with uh, breast tissue and low testosterone and the list goes on and on and on. Now, because I talked a bit more on bile, I do want to mention some other symptoms to, to try to identify if you have low bile. Okay. Number one, do you have an intolerance to digesting fat? When you eat fat, do you find that you get more bloating? That would be an indication that you need more bile. Do you find that your stool is light colored, like pale or even gray, or does it float or does it leave skid marks? That could mean that you're low in bile. Do you find that after you eat, you're just not satisfied? Well, maybe because you're not extracting the fats to be absorbed to then tell the brain like, okay, I'm done eating that could be a sign that you need more bile. If you have uh, nausea or you have indigestion or bloating, those can be signs. Bloating, burping, belching are classic signs of low bile as well. All right, so now that you have some basics on the liver and the importance of bile, bile is really important into keeping the fat out of the liver. So anything you can do 
to increase bile reserves is going to help you get rid of a fatty liver. So some people even take purified bile salts. And I did put a link down below for more information on that. But today I want to talk about a, a really simple shake you can make too, to help reduce fat on your liver. Now, I just want to let you know that um, being on the ketogenic diet, as well as doing intermittent fasting together can reduce the fat on your liver by 50% in just 14 days. If you haven't seen that video, I put that down below. So I just wanted to give you that foundation first because it's essential to go on keto and doing intermittent fasting if you have a fatty liver. But this shake I'm gonna talk about next is a really simple thing everyone can do to keep fat off your liver. And it's backed by some pretty good science. So the ingredients are simple. You're gonna use kale, you're gonna use blueberries, and you're gonna use kefir, okay? I would use organic kale and organic blueberries, and I would keep them in the freezer, okay? Keep them in the freezer. They're much easier to blend. So you just take your blender out and you take two cups of kale frozen, and you can break it up into little chunks. Just put two cups of kale in there because it blends really nicely when it's cold and it tastes better too. And then you put one cup of blueberries. Blueberries not only have quercetin, but so does kale. Quercetin is the ultimate a weapon against a fatty liver, not to mention its involvement in many other aspects of your health, including having a stronger immune system. But quercetin is a, is a fabulous phytonutrient to target a fatty liver. But there's many other things in kale and blueberries that also help you with the fatty liver and liver function in general. So we take two cups of uh, frozen kale, okay? Put in the blender. We take one cup of frozen blueberries, okay? We put a cup of water, and we also put one cup of plain whole fat kefir, okay? Don't get the flavored kind, don't get the sweetened kind, get the organic if possible, grass fed if possible, whole milk, plain kefir. That's gonna give you the probiotics that you need to reduce fat on your liver. So we have the water, the kefir, the kale, and the blueberries. And then you're gonna simply blend this up for a couple of minutes, okay? and blend it up really nicely and then chug it down. It tastes really good and it's extremely effective in reducing fat on your liver. And do that every single day in combination with a healthy keto diet as well as intermittent fasting. Now, if you haven't seen my video on how to reduce a fatty liver within 14 days, I put it right here, check it out.